Okay, now I'm continuing with the body, getting some of the internal coloring, internal uh, edges to be smoothed out like I did for the eyes and the bill and the neck. And now looking at the body, this is a little bit trickier because I've built the the arm out of a few different pieces. So erasing from one doesn't necessarily help it look any different than from the bottom. So I'm going to show you a, a new technique here where instead of taking away, we add on top. But this is just another form of internal compositing, but it's using something called clone stamp. And this is the same in PhotoP as it would be in Photoshop here. So the clone stamp tool looks like this. It's underneath the brush. You just want the regular clone stamp tool. We're going to make a new layer on top of everything. Then I'm going to right click here, just like you can in PhotoP, and choose a color. I'm going to make it red. I'm going to call this layer Clone Stamp. Because when I clone stamp like this, it's like putting a paint job on the car that you're assembling. It's stuff that goes over the top. And I don't want to affect any of the direct pixels from their individual layers. So Clone Stamp is going to be a layer on top of everything. Now, on that layer, I'm going to use the tool and use the settings on the tool and set the settings to be the current layer and below. So it's going to take from all the layers below and put them on the current layer. And then I want the opacity to be pretty strong, just so you can see how it works. I'm going to set it at 100, and I want it to be a soft brush at a pretty large size. So at least 100 pixels, so you can see it. OK, now, in order to fix some of the issues, what I'm going to do is hold down my Option key or my Alt key, whether you're on a PC or a Mac. And then with that one key, it changes my cursor to a target, to a little bullseye. That shows me where I'm going to be copying pixels from in all of the layers. So I'm going to copy pixels from here in all of the layers. And then I'm going to click for where I want to paste those pixels within the brush, like a clone stamp. So what I just did is I copy and pasted pixels from here and put them here at 100% opacity. Then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to grab from here and just carefully place right there. So I'm trying to soften out this transition. Now here, I don't want to take it at 100% anymore. I want to take it at a lower opacity, something in the 60s. And I'm going to grab from there. And we'll show you a little kind of ghosted image. And I'm going to paste it in. So a little bit of that shadow comes through. So you can see the difference that makes clone stamping. Same thing on the inside here, where the shadow seems a little strong at the slightly lower opacity. I'm just going to soften it a little. Let's see how that helps. I can even take an edge like this and clone stamp that edge in if I need to. Or I can take a little bit of this texture here, target it with the Option key, and paste it onto here. But you see how that's going to affect the bill as well, because this is on top of everything. But what's great about putting it on its own layer, just like a paint job on a car, is I can go back in with my eraser, and I can scrub away from it without losing content of the actual layer. OK, now you see this big ridge on the belly. Now I can burn that on the body layer, just to take the highlights down. So let's try that. We'll burn just the highlights. Right there, that helps. But there's still such a big separation there that if I go to Clone Stamp and I hold down Option, and then I composite a little bit of this in, you see how the target of my clone stamp moves with me. 
I can even kind of layer in some of the different fur back up. And any fur that's a little distracting, I can tone down with this slightly low opacity clone stamp. Kind of even out all these textures. So this is a really good blending tool, especially for softer textures like fur. You see, without it, it looks a lot choppier. Now it's easy to overuse it, but because it's all on its one layer, then we can always go in and, and erase from it a bit. The kind of green, greenish glow I get from the edge, I can use Clone Stamp to take that back just by internally compositing some of the texture from higher up. You can always use your Action Key Z to undo if you think it goes too far. So that looks good, but it's too dark. So I'm gonna take the opacity down a little bit more. Do the same sort of thing. Just to break up the light on the back a little bit. Smooth out some of those wrinkles. But because you're layering opacities on opacities, it is gonna soften things. So it works best on soft textures. But then if you need to, you can use that sharpen tool and try to bring out some of that contrast on the edges. And especially at screen resolutions, this is a pretty safe tool to use, though you want to use it at a strength of 30 or less. I'm doing it at 20. And that's just on the clone stamped areas, but you can see how that helps. To bring back some definition where it gets a little too blurry. Okay, then of course you can also dodge and burn your clone stamp. So if I want to burn the midtones of just the clone stamp layer, that can give me some nice subtlety to like burn a shadow behind the arm here. and treat it kind of evenly, or anywhere I've used it. So where, what are some other places I can use Clone Stamp? Uh, right there, I see the seal's eye in the head coming through. You know, there. So I want to Clone Stamp over the top of that. And I'll steal some of the texture from here. And this is an instance where maybe instead of doing it on the overall clone stamp layer, I might go right to that seal head layer and clone stamp directly onto it because I know that that eye is not helping me. So I can steal from there. Oh, got to be on clone stamp. Steal from there and paste it right on. Basically get rid of the eye so that my, my other eye composites more nicely on top of it. And then I can do the overall clone stamp layer. I'm gonna keep the only thing I like from that Mellard duck, which is just that edge there. Duplicate that a few times. Erase that original. There. All right. So now I can use Clone Stamp some places on the head. Just anywhere I want to bring in some of this texture. 
just lightly. I'm only at 37% opacity, kind of the dappledness of it. Bring that in. If I want to erase the little trace of the smile or of the mouth of the original seal, I can do that and then erase it back for the bill. Hopefully you can see the potential of clone stamp. It can help with the edge here where it looks too dark. And I could of course go to that layer. There it is. And use the dodge tool and start with the shadows and brighten those. tends to gray it out. Go to the mid-tones, dodge those, it's a little bit better. I could erase it directly where it's too dark. I can burn it where it's not dark enough. On the inside edge. And I can use sponge where I want to take away color. Desaturate it a little bit. Take away some of that green that's still in that shadow, right? But ultimately, what might work best is the overall clone stamp. I'm taking a lower opacity and just going over it a little bit. It's worth a try. And then, of course, I can always erase away from that to refine it. I can kind of shape it that way. So it evens out the shadows, evens out the textures, makes it all the same kind of furry Psyduck. And if we like that, then we can keep that up. Clone stamp some more. Hold down Option, but make sure you don't have something selected. Using the clone stamp tool. And then erase around it. So remember it's on top of everything, just like painting a car, painting and waxing a car. You can find the best places and ways to use it. You can also make your brush a little smaller if you're trying to be more targeted like I am here in the armpit. And the way we're using it, we're just putting it on top of everything. So this is fine tuning, fine tuning. Do you need clone stamp to meet all the requirements of the project? No, but does it help you refine it? It sure does. I'm gonna sharpen my eraser here a little bit too and shrink it so when I erase out the bill, it doesn't ghost out what I just did in the armpit. And then I can always use the sharpening tool on the clone stamp layer to bring out some of that, that edge as well. And then erase back. There we go. Now clone stamp, because it's on a layer,